So recently my friend told me about a video on YouTube from a user called Creosan and in this video the guys built an EMP gun using a stun gun and a magnetron from a microwave oven. Now his video has over 5 million views but after seeing it I don't think it's real. In the video they use this EMP gun based on a magnetron to destroy electronics in like 10 meters distance. It can also light up fluorescent tubes or neon lamps 10 meters away and it could also disable a motorbike from like 10 or 15 meters distance. And the electronics were destroyed with so much smoke and sparks and loud explosions. It seems too crazy to be real. To me it seems like they put some fireworks in it. And also lighting up a fluorescent tube at 10 meters distance seems way too much to me. A magnetron can actually do quite a lot of crazy stuff, but in this video it's just too much to be believable. So the gun in the video contains a magnetron, or actually three magnetrons, to make it even more crazy, and it has a horn to make it more directional, probably. There is a lamp, probably just for indication, some batteries, a switch, and a stun gun as a source of high voltage. And the batteries probably are for the filament of the magnetron. So let's try to recreate it and maybe debunk it and maybe prove it. Let's see what a magnetron can do and what it can't do. A magnetron is actually a special type of a vacuum tube which produces microwaves at a frequency of 2450 MHz. And this is used in microwave ovens to heat up your food. And it requires a heating filament voltage, it's about 3 volts, and an anode voltage, which is about 4 kilovolts. And you can of course get it from a microwave oven. So let's take a look at it. Let's open it like this, and here you can see the internals. Here is the magnetron, a high voltage transformer for it, a high voltage capacitor, and a high voltage diode. And those are the only components necessary to produce microwaves. The other ones are not necessary, there is just some timer and power regulator, some fuses, soft start, some interference filters, a fan and so on. There is also some light bulb and some safety switches, but those four components are the only ones necessary to produce the microwaves in it. So here you can see the main components of a microwave oven. And here is the schematic of it. Here you can see the transformer with a mains primary, a high voltage secondary and the auxiliary winding for the heater of the magnetron. The magnetron has the heater connected here and the anode is the entire metal body of it. The transformer has a primary winding, the secondary winding and the heater winding here in the middle, just few turns of a thick wire. Here's the high voltage diode and a high voltage capacitor. Because the entire metal body of the magnetron is the anode and you don't want to have a high voltage in it, the anode is actually grounded in the microwave and so instead of putting a positive high voltage into the anode, there is a negative high voltage in the cathode. And the anode is grounded. It has a directly heated cathode, which means that the filament works as a cathode. And there is a circuitry with a capacitor and a diode, working as a voltage doubler for the magnetron. But it also works as a capacitive dropper, limiting the current of the magnetron, because the magnetron can't limit its own current itself. But the capacitor is also in resonance with the transformer, so it works as a power factor correction. And the transformer has magnetic shunts in it, so it has a higher stray inductance. And the inductance of the transformer is in series with the capacitor, so the capacitor is not being rapidly discharged into the magnetron each cycle of the AC voltage. And this is basically a voltage doubler in a negative polarity and with no smoothing. Here the voltage is about 2.1 kV and the peak is about 3 kV. This capacitor is charging to about 3 kV in this polarity. So the voltage here is basically a sine wave, but it's shifted down. 
like this. And the peak voltage here is about minus 6 kV. And this is actually if it wasn't loaded by the magnetron. But after a few seconds the filament heats up and the magnetron starts drawing current. And the voltage drops to about 4 kV peak. And it's important to say that a magnetron has more or less a constant voltage drop which doesn't change with current. So it's acting as a zener or maybe a discharge lamp. And here you can see the current and the voltage of the magnetron. The current is basically negative half cycles of a sine wave, but the voltage is more or less a square wave. So as you can see, the voltage drop doesn't depend on the current. It still has the same voltage drop, about 4 kV. And this is very important for us because it means that you can't increase the power by using a higher voltage, but you can increase the power by increasing the current. If you increase the current, the voltage drop is still going to be about 4 kV. And if you try to increase the voltage, it will draw a crazy current. It will clamp the voltage down to 4 kV at almost any current. So if you for example have a capacitor charged to more than 4 kV and discharge it into the magnetron, it will create an impulse with a very high power. So if you use a stun gun which contains capacitors in its voltage multiplier and the output voltage is surely over 4 kV, you could run the magnetron in short high power pulses. Now I have two possible theories. The first one is that the magnetron acts as a discharge lamp, which means that if you have a capacitor in parallel to it, it will slowly charge until reaching a certain voltage and then the magnetron will suddenly trigger and create a very short, very high intensity pulse. The voltage will quickly drop and then the cycle will repeat. And my theory number two is that the magnetron acts as a Zener diode, which means that in this circuit it will draw just a steady current and then you have to put a spark gap in it to make it run in pulses. So at this point I'm not sure which one is right. But now let's go from theory to some experiments to see if this is real or fake. And as you can see there is quite a lot of videos on YouTube from people who have also built a microwave gun. Which is a little bit unsettling because some of those people have absolutely no idea what they are doing and how dangerous it is. But most of them had quite a short range. They didn't destroy anything or light up anything 10 meters away. But they were using the original transformer as a power supply, not a stun gun. And there is also a video from Alan Penn with over 1 million views. He was debunking Kerosan's gun and trying to recreate it to see if it's possible. He tried to power a magnetron using a stun gun and he had some little success. He was able to light up a fluorescent tube, but from just a short distance. He could also cause some radio interference, but didn't destroy any electronics with this. And I also have to mention that the guys from Creosan channel are wrapping their entire bodies in some aluminium foil or aluminium sticky tape as a protection against microwaves. But it seems completely crazy because they are not protecting their most vulnerable body parts their heads and especially eyes. Because if you are exposed to powerful microwaves, the first thing that happens is that you lose your vision. Because it heats up your eyeballs. And some other balls of course. So let's try to do some experiments and now it's getting very dodgy of course. First let's try to run it in the original microwave circuitry for comparison. So let's see if it can light up some fluorescent tubes and destroy some camera or flashlight or a calculator. So let's see what happens. And the camera is still running. The flashlight as well, but the calculator is glitching. But I can reset it. It still works.
So as you can see, it can light up some fluorescent tubes, but at just a very short distance. But this is just a bare magnetron with no directivity, no impedance matching, no waveguide or horn. So let's try to make it a little bit more directional with this random piece of metal. It's actually a lamp shade, but let's try it to have something to begin with. So let's test it and those are to see if it goes backwards. A guinea pig camera, of course. Well, it seems completely wrong. So there is some leakage here and it's completely strange because it's lighting up the ones which are farther but not the closer ones. So let's try to shield it a little bit and of course this is a horribly bad idea but let's try this. Now it's crazy hot, of course, with no fan. As you could see, the directivity of it is completely unpredictable. There is like several beams with nothing in between. But of course, this is not a proper antenna. It's not a horn, it's a sphere and there is no waveguide. Let's try to make a long shutter picture, like this. So I basically was moving this lamp in front of it on a stick, like this. And here you can see the picture that came out and it's quite impressive. And it shows that this antenna is not very directional. I can see two lobes in it. So now let's try to build Creosan's horn to see if it does any improvements. And I have a feeling that this video already has gone too far because I just accidentally came across a stupid video on the internet, on YouTube, and I just wanted to debunk it. I just wanted to show that it's not possible, but I have a feeling that I'm accidentally going to prove it in the process, which I didn't plan. This is the risk of debunking. Instead of debunking something, you may actually end up proving it. Which I didn't really plan to, and this is probably going to go horribly wrong, because when debunking some stupid video, I may actually end up building a horrible weapon. Isn't this illegal? I have to get rid of it after I test it and this is really a bad idea because this device can actually be quite dangerous, I have to say. So this video is probably going to get demonetized and my channel deleted and I'm going to get arrested for this, but let's do it for science. And... If it's actually possible, it's better to make people aware of it, of course. So this is what's going to be my horn and it looks like from a stupid sci-fi movie, but what scares me is that this may actually work. And here's my waveguide, made of a can and the magnetron. Now let's join it. And there is quite a chance of this catching fire, but let's see what happens. And I have a feeling that this video already went too far and it's not yet finished, but when you start debunking something, you just have to finish. Once you start, you can't stop, of course. So here's my horn. It's very crappy, but it's going to be just for a short experiment anyway. So this looks completely crazy and it actually is crazy, but remember, I'm reconstructing what I saw in Creosan's video. So let's do it the same way. And the most dangerous component, of course. Now let's tie it together somehow. So this is definitely not a perfect shape, but it's probably enough to prove or disprove a theory. So let's see. 
Now let's try to run it with a transformer and then in pulses, for example with a stun gun. As you can see, not much happens. Okay, so let's try a little better calculated one. So let's try to put some capacitors in parallel to the magnetron. So it maybe runs in pulses instead of half cycles, maybe something like this. So here's a capacitor bank from my classic Tesla coil and now it looks completely insane. So now you can actually hear it running in pulses but it doesn't light up any more lamps and the camera is still working and my calculator is also still working. So as you can see a parallel capacitor can make it run in pulses instead of half cycles of a sine wave but the peak current is not so high and it doesn't improve the range of it as you could see. So now instead of putting a capacitor in parallel to the magnetron let's try to discharge it in it. So now let's try to make a simple voltage doubler, charging a capacitor up to 6 kV and discharging it into the magnetron. So here is the experiment, here you can see the main capacitor and here is the capacitor in the voltage doubler, made of three capacitors in series. And here you can see the diodes. And I'm going to switch this using a long stick, like this. So as you can see only those three are lighting up, the nearest ones and the camera is still ok, the calculator is ok and it doesn't even glitch and the LEDs are also ok. So I'm starting to have a feeling that Creosan's video is fake because I was able to light up a fluorescent lamp at half a meter distance and he did 10 meters which is 20 times farther and 20 times the distance requires 400 times the power according to the inverse square law. The power density goes down with the square of the distance. And I didn't even destroy any electronics, but let's give it one last chance. Let's try a higher voltage. They used a stun gun. Now the question is, what's the output voltage of a stun gun? The stun guns often say something like 500,000 volts or even 2 million volts, but trust me, this is not possible. It's fake. Because the electric strength of air is about 1 kilovolt per millimeter. And because the electrodes are usually about 2 cm apart, the actual voltage is about 20 kV. If it was actually 2 million volts, the arcing distance would be about 2 meters. So this is a human and this is the theoretical arc. So let's say Creosan used a capacitor charged to 20 kV. And a side note, at such a high voltage, vacuum technology can already produce some X-rays. Ok, so there's a high voltage transformer and some diodes for a multiplier. So now the original transformer is just for the heater and the new one has a doubler here and then I will connect it to the magnetron. And the voltage here is about minus 15 to minus 20 kV and Creosan actually uses a lithium ion battery for the heater but this doesn't make any difference. Now let's measure the spark. It's hissing, it's quite a high voltage, few centimeters, bloody hell, that's a loud bang. 
So it definitely has enough voltage for a stun gun and Kryostan says that he has a very powerful stun gun but I'm sure that he can't have a bigger capacitor in his stun gun than this. So if this isn't enough, nothing is. And nothing happens except extremely loud bangs. And camera OK, calculator OK, LEDs OK and no lamps lighting up. So it doesn't work at all. I'm almost giving up. What if I remove the interference filter from the magnetron? There are some coils which can be blocking or spreading the pulses. So let's remove it and I have to be careful because this pink part can be actually beryllium which is quite toxic of course. So let's remove this filter. There are coils and this part is actually a capacitor. So let's try to connect it directly with no filter. Ok, so now the filter is bypassed. Ok, so just a very little blinking in those closest ones. The camera is still ok, calculator ok, LEDs ok and maybe some little interference in the video from this camera. So let's put it even closer, like 30 centimeters. So at a higher voltage it seems to be less efficient. So the calculator glitched but I can still reset it. And the camera is still ok. Now the question is, did I destroy the magnetron? Let's try to run it normally. It still seems to work. Did Creosan use a higher heating voltage and microwave capacitors in parallel to the stun gun? And let's also try more magnetrons. Ok, probably the last experiment before giving up. So even more capacitors, even more voltage and a calculator, camera and a radio. So the calculator is still ok, not even glitching, camera still running and what about the radio? Still running. So at this point I'm giving up, I think it's properly debunked and an EMP gun made of kitchen stuff is busted. It can't even destroy any electronics at 30 centimeters. So if you want to destroy some electronics, it's much easier for you to just take a hammer and smash it. Because with the hammer, you can actually reach much farther. So to sum it up, you can't really destroy any electronics with this device. And let alone at 10 meters. In Creosan's video, there were probably some fireworks or smoke generators hidden in the electronics or in the motorbike. There are definitely some special effects and electronics definitely don't fail this way. The amplifier was exploding and there were some pieces flying from it which is impossible if it's in a housing. Maybe it can light up some lamps but not at such a high distance and as you can see the video is cut when they zoom the lamps which means that they may have gone much closer to it and then record the glowing lamps. And the glitches in the video may actually be real but it can also be from just the high voltage, not the microwaves. And definitely don't try to do this. 
It looks like fun in the video, but it's actually quite dangerous. I nearly electrocuted myself and cooked myself trying to test it. To survive such experiments you have to have a lot of knowledge or a lot of good luck or probably both. Did I really try to build it? That's crazy. So this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And in the next video I definitely have to do something less crazy. Because on a scale of insanity from 0 to 10 this is about 100.